Hello everyone. How are you? I hope you're doing really well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi Galena. I'm just fussy cutting out an image while everybody kind of finds their finds their chair, gets something to drink, whatever. Hope you're doing super well today. It is May the 3rd. Can you believe we are in May already? I know. Sounds so silly when everybody says that. It's May. It's whatever. But I'm telling you. I totally, I totally get it. I totally get it. When people say that, because it's like, man, the time is going fast. Yeah. You guys ever find that? Do you ever feel like that? It's like, time is just going on. <laughs> it's going fast. So, it's good to see you guys today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Barb Owen. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> as soon as I get this little bit across here cut out I thought I might want to use this today because it's a really it's a really cool image found in a magazine and look at this isn't that a cool image I just thought I needed to cut that out well let me say hello to everybody while I'm here hey Joycey hi Ina hey Ina good to see you fireball baby Beth boy that's quite a name <laughs> Hey Ruth. Hi Nancy. Hi Linda. Um, you forgot <laughs> you were forgot I was streaming. It is time for drama free Friday. Hey Malia. Hi Joan. Joan Smithies that you'll see in the chat is um, she is a stencil designer for eye stencils. She's one of quite a few stencil artists. And they have a big sale going on this weekend, and it is through, I think, Joan can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's through Sunday at midnight, and you can check out the, her stencils. I was, I haven't seen all the designs yet, I looked at part of them. Patty Tolly Parish is streaming this weekend, and demonstrating Joan's designs and they're through iStencils.com I believe. Joan you can correct me if I'm wrong and they are a really unique style. I like I like um, I like what she's done with her stencils so if you are a stencil hoarder and who isn't let's face that let's just face that right now <clears throat> we need stencils anonymous don't we um, the sale is going on. I think it's 25% off and then you get free shipping and over a certain number like you have to pay $50. Again, Joan can correct, put all that information in the chat if I'm incorrect. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat at the moment. I'm just trimming out this image. Um, I think like it's over $50. You get free shipping and and I think there's a there's usually a free stencil also and they uh, have very fast service and they ship internationally so there you go that is my endorsement for Jones stencils because I think it's great to support each other um, Galena only has 10 stencils Galena you're late to the party, girl. You are late to the party. <laughs> if, once you get hooked on them, they are hard to leave alone. They are hard to leave alone. You check out the, the kids' supplies. You check out the sales. You check out, you know, yeah, just saying. Hey, Jan. Let's see, who else is here that I missed? That's right. Okay, Joan says I was right. Okay, that's good. Hi, Marion. Hi, Joy. 
So if you're new to my channel, hi Susie, if you're new to my channel and you just happen to pop in and you go, what is she doing saying hello to all these people for? That's because I stream once a month. My name is Barb Owen. My business is howtogetcreative.com and I stream once a month. And so when I do, I say hello to everybody. So if you're, if you're new to the channel and you're watching the recording and you get all irritated because there's all this stuff at the beginning, just fast forward. It's really easy. Hey, Joycey, did I say hi to you? I don't know. Oh, good, Susie. I'm glad you're here. Um, who else? Hey, Tori. Good to see you. I haven't seen you for a while. Um, I said hi to Jan. Bless my socks and undies. Thank you, Jan. And I return the favor and the blessing to you. <laughs> hi, Annette. Tara. Elise. Braddy Patty. I just love Braddy Patty's name. I don't know what Braddy Patty's real name is, but I love saying Braddy Patty. <laughs> I don't know why, I just do. Uh, let's see, who else? Oh, but but the truth comes out because Galena is not addicted to stencils, but she's addicted to pens. <laughs> I see. I get it now. Hi, Barbara. Hey, Cindy. Oh, I'm glad I'm here, too. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Diana. Uh... Hi, Joy. Joey. I want to say joie, but I'm not French, so I don't even know if that's right. So I'm just calling you Joey. And oh, from Belgium. Okay, now I'm going to take a wild guess, and I'm going to say your name is Verl. Is that right? You'll have to spell it phonetically in the chat for me to say it right, and then I'll try to remember. Um, oh, Nancy says I'm a bright light. <laughs> glad you think so miss nancy i'm glad you think so you know what it is drama free friday and why is it drama free because there's too much crazy drama in the world and we witnessed witnessed it again this week in the united states we're not going down that path i just want to say that my heart it goes out to all the people in north carolina involved in that situation so I'm sure there are many, many others. Anyway, we're not going to go down that path. I just wanted to acknowledge them anyway. Uh, hi, Sarah. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Patty. Did you accident? My um, crazy phone. <laughs> my phone was sitting next to my computer, and I said hello to Sarah, and she thought I was talking to Siri. When your phone starts bossing you around, it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. Hey, Patty. I haven't seen you for ages. How are you? Good to see you in the chat. Braddy Patty, because she's Brett. Okay. All right. That's allowed. Um, hey, Janet. Hi, AJ. Art and Crafting Lady. Art and Crafting Lady. CB, hello. Oh, it's so good to see all these names here. Yeah, so it's uh, Drama Free Friday. So um, we're going to keep it drama free, okay? Which means uh, there's plenty of drama out in the world. We know that. And so this is a place you come, hopefully, to just get a little break away from that. And hopefully while you're here, I'll make you smile a little bit and uh, give you something else to think about and and maybe hopefully give you some creative ideas of some sort. If you walk away with one idea, I think I've been successful. I'm glad you can't see my room today because my room is an absolute disaster. <laughs> I'm glad you can't see it. I, what you see behind me, everybody thinks, oh, everything's all so organized in my studio. It's all organized. No, it's a very carefully constructed camera shot. <laughs> so cheers, everybody. We're having a little Americano today. And um, uh, today what we're going to talk about is art journaling. You want to see it, AJ? <laughs> you really want to see it. I don't know if I can even give you a shot of it. I have a handheld camera, but I don't know whether I can. Of course, this is going to be terrible camera work. Terrible camera work. Let's see. I don't have enough cord stretched out to give you the full effect. 
All right, hang on a minute. All right, this is going to be terrible camera work. I'm warning you right now, if you tend to get queasy with cameras moving, the, shut your eyes. Okay, so there's my desk. This is what I look at when I'm streaming, by the way. So there's a computer, a computer, a computer. I'm not shooting directly at the screens. A computer. Okay, those are all the screens I'm looking at when I'm broadcasting. I have controls that control that computer, this computer, there's keyboards under here. So this is all this stuff is underneath the computer. So this is my table. <laughs> this is what you look at when I'm looking at you. I've got cameras up there, microphone. I've got cameras. Uh, there's another camera here. There's another camera up uh, there. Can you see it? There's another camera up there. So that's all cameras. Okay, so here's on my shelves, uh, supply shelves here. And then we come down here to this disaster where everything is starting on the floor. There's disasters under the table, under the table, under the table, on the floor. My cart, which is just a big, massive mess. That's the other end of my table. See, there's stuff just, just stacked on top of the paint, which is supposed to be accessible. There's another table over there that has, it's all stacked to the ceiling on the other side of that pencil case. Then there's tablets stuck in the, beside the wall over there and so forth and that's all i'm going to show you because we're not going to go any further than that yeah we're not going any further than that and then uh that's to say nothing of what's behind door number one or whatever call whatever door i call that <laughs> yeah it's a mess um any hoot okay it's not that messy. Wait, when you can't get up and walk around, it's messy. So we're talking about art journaling today because that was a request that I had from uh, viewers. So we're going to talk about art journaling and we're going to do a little art journaling today. Hey, Dorothy. Uh, why so many cameras and monitors? So that I can give you the all the shots. And okay, but monitors, I'll explain the monitors. The one monitor that's on my far left that I keep looking at, that's where my chat is running. I have two monitors that are connected. One is my computer, the one directly in front of me is my computer. So that's a big monitor. The one off to the left is my preview monitor, which I don't need to go into. But it's my set, we'll say it's my second monitor. When I'm broadcasting, I am setting the shot on one camera and then making it live and so i see it on the other one the third uh or the one two three four i can count the fourth computer which is off to the right is the one that sends a signal out, out to the world so it's a system all the cameras are required so i can give so i can do all the recording and get all the different shots so i can actually show you what uh what i'm doing as if you were here so yeah that's why hi Patricia and anybody that I didn't say hello to because I miss seeing you I'm really glad you're here thank you for joining me if you have questions be sure that you put them in capital letters all caps because that's the only shot that I have to be able to to see them so the questions hi Gail Just think her son. Yeah, it's, he, it's all his fault. It is the technical department's fault, let me tell you. All right, one more swill. So let's talk about, first of all, before we get going, I wanted to say one thing. VIP members, if you're a VIP member of How to Get Creative, your email went out earlier today with the link for your class tomorrow. Okay, so check your email. And I will see you tomorrow. For your class 
So what I've been doing lately, a lot of, it's not the only thing I've been doing by any means, but I've been doing a lot of mandala creation. And this happens from time to time where I get, um, mandalas are my place to go to when things get a little, as I say, sticky. <laughs> and um, so I'm just going to show you what I've been doing. Well, Nancy, maybe something will change in that regard. Because we need you. We need you. All right. I may have shown these in an earlier stream. Some of these. Let's see. We'll start with this one. Because this one is the one that actually kind of started it all. And everything's kind of a big mess. So if you get extra little goodies over here that you have to look at, my apologies, or shadows and so forth. Whoops. There we go. So this particular mandala is, this is, almost all of this was done live on YouTube. Not quite all of it, but almost all of it. So I started doing this one, and then that led to this one. And these are about, these are, this is on 12 by 12 cardstock. And so you can see they're pretty good size. I don't always work this big. And then I did this one. And they're all different um, different techniques that I was just challenging myself with. And um, so, yeah. So they're different. I'll get zoom in on this one because this one is so subtle that it's hard to see the detail in it because I did color on color on this one. And uh, so from a distance, it's very subtle until you get close up and then you get start seeing all the details. Hi, Janet. Hi, Kate. You like the green? I do, too. Okay, so those are the big ones that I worked on. And then I've done, this is one of my art journals. So this is one of my art journals. So this will segue us into, sorry, I got a little close. This will segue us into... The other things I wanted to show you, this is a square dilutions journal, and it's the black one, and I bought this not knowing what I was going to do with it, and then I started putting mandalas inside uh, the pages. I'll tell you, I don't have enough room on my table today. I'm running into stuff. So I'm just going to flip through these, and I'm going to show you the new ones, because I know I've shown you these many times um, most of these in the front of the book let's see these come from the ebooks that you'll find links to down in the description box so these are from the ebook all of these are from the ebooks we have um, mandala melange mandala medley and then we have mandala madness a design a book of several free designs and then we have another one that's Mandala Madness Designs from the Deck that goes through goes with our Mandala Madness inspiration cards. Oh, Fireball Baby Beth, are you the one with the glaze pin? I think you are. I got the glaze pin, and I'm going to show you. I did one with the glaze pin. Because she's the one. Beth was in my Mandala Madness class, and she was just really singing the praises of the uh, jelly roll black pen glaze pen I used the regular black jelly roll but I had never used the glaze pen to do mandalas and so I got one and I did use it okay <clears throat> so okay Beth okay now I got gotcha. you now I got gotcha. you <laughs> you cannot hide from me Beth now I'm on to you I'll probably forget your your screen name again, but anyway, thank you for for uh, telling me. Okay, so these again are from the ebook. So are these from one ebook or the other? This one is is a free pattern on the blog at howtogetcreative.com. If you search for how to draw a mandala, this one is an easy one to do. Uh, these are from the Mandala Madness course 
and this is a seven-sided mandala. Same thing with these. These are from the deck. Okay, this one is one that I just did just a, a couple weeks ago. Hey, Josie. So I did this one a couple weeks ago. This one is inspired, not the middle of it, but the outside of it is inspired by the Zentangle um, project pack that they did. And they had project pack number five, which I didn't buy the project pack, but I watched the videos. So this is done by Zen, the Zentangle designers, creators of Zentangle. And this was a one of the border designs they did in their cartouche series so I'm just gonna come in a little bit so you can see this is the first time I did anything like that with the border type thing and that was really fun so I tend to I tend to when I'm doing mandalas to keep them pretty symmetrical and this is a hand-drawn one so this is not this is not like these which are coming from the ebook which these are done in illustrators so these are are very exact this is a hand-drawn one and um, it started out with a piece of scrap paper that had color on it and then I just went crazy this is these are all from the ebook that comes with the Mandel Madness inspiration cards so these the ebook that you download gives you all the symbols from the card and then you can cards and you can do whatever you want. So I just colored them and then made them into a mandala. Okay. This one we did on stream probably a year or so ago. This one I drew on old, um, fragile, very fragile paper, text paper, and then I copied it and printed it out. So these are actually the copies of this and then I uh, printed it out and then colored them and so forth. Um, okay, this, this is from the mini course with the purchase of the cards. So this is one of the techniques from that. So is this and this. Okay, these are ones that I just recently did. This one's done on black cardstock. Okay, so black cardstock and this is totally done with pens. Okay, so that's total. I'm just giving you a close up so you get the idea. So these are this is done completely with um, gel pens that show up on black, and then I cut it out, put it in to the book. This was a piece of scrap paper that um, I just grabbed something out of my stash of inky stuff that just had color on it. it had I think acrylic paint on it, and then I just drew a mandala on top of it, colored it and added pen work. This one is using uh, acrylic ink. It looks like crayon. It's not. And it's drawn on music paper. That is a bit of a challenge, but it's fun. So this is acrylic ink for the lines, um, although they look like uh, crayon. They're not. And then when I put it in the book, then I added a border. But the piece was big enough, the mandala was big enough that the border went off the edges. So I just let it look like it just was, you know, flowing off the edges. But it's done on music paper. Um, the This is guidelines. This is all done. The guidelines were done with um, just graphite pencil. And honestly, most of it went away when I did the line work. If there was any left, I may have erased it. But yeah most of it I did put the guidelines on there with just plain old graphite pencil and this is what we did last month last month we colored the um, images these uh, I gave you a download and that download still available if you want it just go back in my feed to last month and you'll have to go back to the the April class or the April live stream and I show exactly what I did well here's how I finished them I after I cut them out then I layered them up so I layered different bits and pieces from the different piece uh, different mandalas that I colored with alcohol ink so I layered them up 
and put them in here and then just added bits and pieces around them. So this is the it rest of the story from the last time that I streamed. So you can see the various things. Um, I, I, Nancy, I erase the graphite lines so that they're super, super light first. And then I go over everything with the gel pen. So, and I'm only doing, when I'm doing something like this on the black, we'll go back to the black one. This one, like this one on black, I'm only doing the basic outlines. I don't do any of the, the, um, detail stuff. I don't do any of that in graphite. I only do just the basic shapes. So by the time I've gone over it with the various pens and um, paint pens and gel pens and stuff, the I don't have any trouble with it. It just goes, I just let it go away. If you inspected it really closely, you might still see some graphite. Hi, Alona. So it's not really any, any big deep dark secret, honestly. It's just, um, you know, here, here's what I do. Here's, here is the honest truth of what I do. I just, I just go for it and see what happens. And if it comes out to be something I like, great. I go, oh, I really like it. And if it's something I don't like, I cut it up and use it for something else. So that's, that's how that goes. All right. So this is what this is from last month. These are a similar process, exactly. The same process is on the black, but these are just on different colors of cardstock. So these are done with gel pens or paint pens or both. And this one isn't stuck in the, well, it's just barely stuck in the book because I haven't um, glued it in yet. This one was a piece of music paper. And honestly, this is my least favorite mandala I have ever done. It's growing on me, but I'm still not sure that I like it. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. This is on music paper also. So you can see the music staff in the back. This particular one was, it already had um, paint on it. So it had like brown, it was a jelly print. It had brown and um, I don't know, maybe some green. I'm pretty sure it had green on it and brown. And so I thought, well, I'll take those colors and I'll just, you know, go for it. And it's like, I got done. And I'm like, I don't know about this one. <laughs> Hi, Miss Allie. Yes, the birds are singing here to beat the band. So anyway, it's not. And this one, Beth, this is the one I did with the glaze pen. So let me zoom in so you can see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But if I tip it in the light, I'm trying to catch the light, you might be able to see it um, reflecting. Right in here, you'll see it reflecting. That is the glaze pen, which is the Jelly Roll glaze pen. And let's see, can I catch the light a little bit more? There you go. See this? See those dots? Those are done with the glaze pen. So all of the black on here is done with the glaze pen. And some of these other dots on here, when you see something really shiny, that's also the glaze pen. So they are very shiny and a little bit dimensional. Um, I did find that the set I got, which I just bought them locally, um, I did find that they it made a thicker line than I was expecting it to do. But it was still, it was still really interesting. You can see some of it. This is your favorite. <laughs> you know, here's the thing, because people say, and I get this, I get told this a lot, or the comment a lot from people, it's like, I don't have the patience to do that. Those are just too much. I don't have patience to do that, um, that uh, mandala stuff. And honestly, it's, it is one it is just one line at a time. That's all it is. And I've shown the process a few times here on YouTube. And I take you step by step through everything in the Mandela course. I'm thinking about doing another follow-up Mandela course. But don't hold me to that. Because I don't know that that's going to happen anytime soon. 
but I have some ideas for doing mandalas on unusual surfaces. And um, it is truly one line at a time. You make one decision and you repeat it. One decision, repeat it. It's not hard. It's very uh, calming. It's very calming. It is. Beth says it's relaxing and therapeutic. It really is. Okay. Um, all right. I think that's it. So that's what I've, that is part of what I have done. That's a small part of what I do. I, I will lay those out and get them ready. And then I'll do them in front of the TV while the ball game's on, bat, or baseball game is on or something is on. So I do that. Okay. I want to show you a couple of other art journals. This one, you know, this is more of a, um, kind of falls in the category of scrapbook art journal, scrapbook inspiration. Again, I've shown this in the past, but I want to show you what happens to this book. This is a three ring binder. I outgrew the file folder that it used the stuff, this stuff used to be in. And, uh, <laughs> Nancy, Nancy wants to be a tester. Um, so this is my faces book and that's what I have written on the spine of it. So it's just a three ring binder. I like this image, so I don't even know where it came from. So I put it on a piece of cardstock and st stuck it to the front cover. But here's what happens. It starts out all nicely organized. Okay. Everything starts out organized and it's all, I put everything in uh, plastic sleeves and I mount it on cardstock and all that kind of stuff. And then the next thing you know, I, this happens. Okay. This happens to my, to my, um, books and journals. Yeah. This is what happens. I start accumulating stuff. And so I'm just sticking it in the book. So we'll go through those in a minute. Um, but this is what I do. And I highly recommend if you are into any kind of specific thing like flowers or faces or, um, houses or you know plants or whatever make yourself a journal of inspiration okay make an art journal uh, an inspiring art journal and sometimes what i do is i just slip things in you know like this is just notes that i've stuck in this one page and i have the this was a class that i taught and so i put the notes in here this is using a magazine image and so forth. But I just go through and I collect faces. Okay, I just collect faces. And underneath this tracing, this is a tracing in here. There's just a myriad of faces that happen to be on the other side of this image. So and I just stuck them in there. But what I do is I go through, and I know these are in sleeves that are kind of reflective, but I go through and I collect all these images, and then the best way to look at them, in my opinion, is to put them on a piece of paper or cardstock. I think this is just colored paper. And I glue them in there, just tack them with glue stick. Okay, I just tack them with glue, glue stick and I just stick them in here and I'm doing and, and you, as I go through you'll probably see some notes on here about why I collected the various faces there's something about babies and children's faces that I'm fascinated by I love the proportion of their faces and the way their eyes are shaped and when you look at the different eyes on here you can see how very different they are from one to the other here, you know, the open mouth and so forth. I love little baby's fists, you know, and so, and little, you know, little baby feet. So there's a lot of things on this one that I can use as reference for drawing and so forth. And, um, but just different things, different things like hairstyles and ears. So I'm just going to flip through this, you know, these eyes that are looking up. It just gives me reference to look at. And then different ethnicities. I drew this little guy 
and um, he turned out okay, except I screwed up his forehead, and uh, so he looks almost like, he looks like himself from the eyes down, not from the eyes up, <laughs> but that's why you practice, you know, and then getting expressions where the eyes are one side or the other, looking one direction or the other. So I'm just going to go through, and this is on drawing on uh, cloth. I cut this out of a magazine and stuck it in here. So drawing faces on cloth, which I do a lot of. This was a porcelain doll face. And then I collect, I like images that show different character lines, different ages, close-ups on um, features. So whatever it is I'm finding fascinating about that, you know, I, it, it helps if you isolate what it is you're attracted to. Cut them out and stick them, hi Vicki, and stick them in a book like this. At least that's what I find. So this is an art journal. It's a glue book type art journal because it's just giving me the references of these various features and things that I'm interested in uh, reproducing at some point. You'll, you'll be able to know who some of these people are because they're obviously famous people. So this is expression with the mouth, very expressive of emotion. So I just made myself a note what was it that attracted me to this eyes to the side side mouth expression surprise winking eyes great mouth um, this was all about facial shape to me and and hair so some of these I do just to capture the hairstyle most of the time I'm just after the features of the face but sometimes I'm after the hairstyle or open mouth using how to capture teeth and so forth. Hey, Jamie. And um, so, yeah, I mean, most of these are advertisements of one kind or another, but the face, you know, with the eyes looking up. So I'm just gonna flip through this. So most of these are female faces in this section. And, you know, if I can, I don't very often find, for whatever reason, I don't very often find Asian faces. But when I do, I try to grab the image and put it in my book. And then this one is has a whole group. You know, I like the groups of people so that I can, can look at and compare them all in one grouping so different facial shape shapes and different eyes and different ages and then here are some of the the um, male images that I found that I liked again incorporate looking at the lines the lines in the face and facial hair hairstyles, um, the eyebrow, you know, expression with the eyebrows. And this is just, you know, Ben Franklin that was on a, a dollar or whatever the bill is. He's on $100 bill or whatever. That It was in a magazine, so I cut it out. Somebody that's asleep. So I just go through magazines. Anything that attracts me, I pull them out. And this is a drawing. You know, that's obviously a piece of artwork. And uh, we do a lot of Santa Clauses, the um, carvings. My husband's a wood carver, and that's why his name is Claus Man. And so I am always looking for images of Santa Claus just to see the different ways that they've created those images. These are done on fabric. And that is that. But what I was going to show you is that not only do I have this nice book, but then I end up, you know, chucking all these other things in here. So, you know, just whatever appeals to me. These are old, old headshots. I've done this old guy. Those of you that have been hanging around me for a while know that I've paint drawn him or painted him a few times. Love that facial expression. Yeah. 
and this is just so interesting just looking at her you don't very often see a, um, an image that is that much of a profile so all these old headshots came from um, there's another profile came from somebody that was getting rid of all this stuff so I kept all the ones that I thought I would use so I have all those and this is from somebody that I um, these are cartoon style faces isn't it sweet and this these were images that were copied from magazines so there was a straight on face a three quarter face and a profile face but they're big enough that you can actually put a piece of tracing paper over it and trace those different hairstyles and then you know if all else fails just get one of these pockets and just chuck things in the pocket so just because I don't have time or I don't take the time it's more accurate I don't take the time to organize all this stuff that doesn't mean that I don't continue collecting and adding to this particular art journal reference journal hi Dar oh Jamie bless your heart <laughs> I just saw that all right this is another one that is more uh, actually an art journal and this is based on Joanne Sharp's book I was several years ago I don't know when how long ago it was but several years ago I got really sick in the winter like I'm talking sick like I couldn't get over it <laughs> if you go back and I mean it's probably three or four years ago if you go back and you listen to those videos I sound like I have got a perpetual cold well it's because I'd get sick and then I get over it and then I get sick again and then I get over it and then I get sick again and so I was a mess for a while I finally just took time off and just stopped doing anything and just concentrated on getting my body back in shape cheers and while I was doing that I worked through Joanne Sharp's book a lot of it and this was what I did so this is a uh, composition notebook that came from Walmart, I think. It, uh, I did the, the cover I did on a stream at some point. And it is one of these that I made double-sided. Okay, so it opens from both sides. I used to have a library of books when I was a kid that I was fascinated by. I talked my mom into buying them because I love books even as a kid and they had all the great kids stories in them but they were they were just like this you know you read the the book from front to the middle and then you had to flip it over and then you read a new book from the front to the middle from the cover to the middle so I've always been fascinated with stuff like that so anyway hey Shelly crafting mama Shelly and Shelly Carlson good to have the Shelly's are in the house Just checking back if I miss saying hello to any of you I'm so glad you're here thanks for joining me so this is we're talking about art journaling today we're actually going to do some art journaling but we're just talking talking about it at the moment so this is um, this book and this has a plastic cover on it again it was something I found at Walmart it has a zipper um, has a zipper opening which will at some point go away could be today you never know <laughs> and you slip your book you slip the book in inside it you slip the covers of the book let's see if I can show this to you okay here's the cover of the book okay or the flap for the cover and then you can actually unzip this and you could actually slip papers and stuff inside that which I never have done but you know it it's there in case I want to see there's all this crap stuck in there all right so what is in here is practice on different lettering styles and and things that inspire me so this was um, something I actually snapped a picture of it in a retail store 
the Sakura Aqua Aqua Lip pens. I have not. I don't know what those are. Is that how you say it? Aqua Lip? I have not heard of that. You'll have to put information. I'll have to look that up. I'll write it down. I'll write it down. Making myself a note, so I'll look that up. I always love to look up new pens. So many of these, it's not about what the words say. It's about the style of, of the words. And I did some, uh, using this idea of all these different ways of writing words, I in, like on a blackboard type thing, I did some things like that using, um, I made clipboards out of them using this type thing. So let me zoom in really tight so you can see what that is. So you see all those different words. And so it was all different words of inspiration, kind of like doodle words. Huh, transparent so you can see through them. Oh, interesting. Oh, cool. I'm going to look those up. Thanks for sharing that, Nancy. So this is just in here for an idea, okay? It's just to remind me, because if I don't put them in something like this, I forget about it. And then these are just things that I cut out of magazines. And the pages, I think... I don't know if I did two pages. I think I did two pages, and this is the graph style paper. I think I glued two pages together maybe with glue stick, and then I put washi tape over the edges, which makes a really cool look to your book. It takes time, but I was sick, so, you know, I didn't have anything but time to, and I was bored, so I had to do something. So this is all about styles of letters. And this is alphabets, just, you know, diff just playing with different kinds of words. And if you use, uh, make yourself a journal like this using the um, graph paper, then it gives you lines to follow. It, you can space your letters and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, and then some of it's pen practice or just making pen, uh, writing down what kinds of pens I had at the time. Some of it's about alphabets. Some of it's just about writing words and um, seeing how I can decorate, you know, pages with, you know, little scroll work and um, that kind of stuff. So this is a combination of me writing in here, drawing letters, and also wherever I had a place that I could, I, I glued in things for reference. This ooh la la is meaningful to me, not only for the style of letter, but, but because that was what my mother called a latte. And she couldn't remember latte, so she called it ooh la la. And so when I found that, I'm like, oh, I don't care whether I like the letters or not. It's going in my book. So sometimes my journals, my art journals, become part scrapbook, part memory keeping, um, that kind of thing. So... Ah, that's really fun, Nancy. I'm going to look that up. But if you look at these, you can see all these different ways of looking at letters. If you don't look at letters and words in magazines, I bet you will after this. <laughs> I bet you will after this. Um, these were, although they're little, these were pages from a little tiny book. And I ended up copying the little book. This is actually the cover of it. Um, but I copied the book is a book that I own and I I cut them out and put the little bits in here again because of just inspiration for the way that they use lettering okay like this and like this I mean you would think that I could remember that but I don't remember it you know so but because I but because I have it in the book I can remember it but be quiet first Yes, <laughs> but be quiet first. This one I love. This is, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. There we go. The, the, remember, these are printed, so, um, or copied, so they're, the rendition is not all that great. But I love this because it's done in a shape, so it's words in a shape. 
And then there are times when I make myself a note in my journal so that I remember why it was this was appealing to me. Hey, Heidi Popo. All right, so that is what that's about. And so I'm just going to whip through the rest of these. Again, just styles of letters, playing around with how to make letters, or gluing in things that inspired me. These were stickers that I found that I really liked, so I put them in those. Um, so just, just looking, just inspiration. These were all my pens and markers at the time. My collection has grown a little bit since then. I'm sorry, but it has. <laughs> and these are black markers and um, just miscellaneous things. Yeah, this does have two pages stuck together because that was how I kept it, kept the pens from going through. That's what I remember now. So I glued two pages together and then that way the pens wouldn't go through. Uh, this was done on matte paper, and I love this. Oh, the places you will go, done on map, a map. Got some new pins, and so I had to test them out. And I love this. Journaling helps me untangle. That is absolutely the truth. That is absolutely the truth. Mm -hmm. Different kinds of alphabets, just playing around. Some of these are directly influenced straight from... Joanne Sharp's book, and some of them were just things I found either online or in my computer in the di different fonts. Um, this was just white pens on black gesso, right? White pens over gesso, and so forth and so on. I love this. This came from the book. It was just doing different kinds of quotes in different lettering styles on just different little blocks of color. I love this alphabet or font. I love how this looks. This is much easier to do if you'll do this using graph paper because um, then you have something that kind of helps you do your letters. Um, so I'm just going to page through this just so you can see the rest of it. If there's something you particularly want to see, hey Dana, um, tell me and give me a specific and I'll go back and try to tell you what's what. Okay, so again, some of them I really, really like. I love this one. This is a white out pen, the Bic white out pen. So this isn't even a, a an art pen. This is just a Bic white out pen on text paper. Hard to see on some things. So you got to choose your color carefully for it to show up. This was done over paste paper. So these were scraps of my various paste papers and then I lettered over it. This is a really common lettering style that I think was made, I think it was popularized by Tisha Moore. Um, but I had, the interesting thing was putting some of the letters in big letters and then some of the words in the uh, small letters. Let's see if I can make this clearer in here. Okay, like that. And so I made notes on here like from Pinterest, Julie Faith and Balzer, um, and so forth. So just adding notes there. Because it is just a journal. It is an art journal. It's an inspiration for me. Watercolor-ish, <laughs> thin pen lines, different shapes, and just playing with different ways, different ways. Pump it up. Mm -hmm. um, story strips. This was from the book, from Joanne's book. I love the way this looks. Black letters outlined in white. This is another one I look that love. This came directly from the book. Those different kinds of letters. Black ink and then accented with red. I love how that looks. 
Um, it's helpful to write quotes and write words, not just alphabets. It's very helpful if you do that. And this is this has dimension. I don't know if you can see this, but this actually this page has dimension on it. It's um it's different kinds of dimensional paints. I just dumped stuff out of my book. Can you believe it? And sometimes things stick. Like this is a glossy paint and it even though it had been fully dry when I put it in here, it stuck. You have to be okay with that. Uh, this was a stencil, so you can see the graph paper through it. So I put it over here, and I did the stenciling, and then I glued the stencil in. So that's a hand-cut stencil. And there are the letters that I cut out of here. Put them over here. This is one of my favorite pages. That's just an alphabet. And then these are things that I cut out, uh, or tore, tore out, that I haven't glued in yet. Again, styles of letters that I really like. I love this Earth Day. Um, so just different lettering styles. This, I love this kind of lettering style which uses different fonts to illustrate a quote. Mm -hmm. And again, just different lettering styles. So, you know, when you look at magazines and all that kind of stuff, um, just look for lettering ideas. If you enjoy that kind of thing, like this, you can take photographs. If you have pictures that aren't any good, which I have a truckload of those, you know, um, printed photographs, you can make letters out of them like that. And this was a little book that I don't remember why I did this. If this came from the class, I think it did, but this was just a little accordion book. Different lettering styles on the various pages. And because there's not a good way to display that, I just chucked it in the book. All right, that's the end of that. So then if you turn it over the other direction, then I have even more junk chucked in here and more alphabets and that kind of stuff and some notes from a class that that Joanne had online it was about what did she call that class it was a free class five golden letterings and that was a Joanne Sharp thing testing pins playing with thickening the lines, and that's as far as I got in there. So there's only, in this book, there's only this many pages. These are not stuck together, but there's only that many pages that I don't have filled up in this particular art journal. So that's that one. Okay. Hi, Julia. So if you have any questions, ask me about that. Otherwise, we're going to go on. So that's just a couple of ideas of art journals that I thought maybe you would not think, maybe think about those as art journals. I call them art journals. You might call them something else. You might call them scrapbooks. I don't know. So if you have any questions, pop those in the chat. Do you like that kind of art journaling? Um, or do you even consider them art journals? I'd be interested in what you have to say. So pop that in the chat if you want. Crafting Mamas, Miss Shelley, Crafting Mamas, are you back to streaming it um, yet? Gail says she'd call them art journals. I'm just finishing up my finishing up my coffee. See, it's almost gone. You know what's funny about these? <laughs> I have a cat. I know some of you are new around here might not know that. I have two big fat Siamese cats. That's why the door is shut because they're back there. Charlie was driving me absolutely, he's driven me bonkers for two days talking to me. I don't know what his problem is. And, um, but Charlie is not the one that was driving me, drives me bonkers about this. Chance, the gray one, drives me crazy about this. He likes coffee. And um, although I seldom, I only buy coffee and bring it home. I don't make it here. 
That way I can control how much I drink. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the way I do it. And he loves these cups, and so he will drag them out of the trash. If it's on the desk, I will come. If I leave and I come back and there's not much in it, his nose, his big old fat gray Siamese nose is stuck way down the cup, and his tongue is licking out what's left. He also likes smoothies, by the way, and that's another story. Yeah. Um, don't tell the tech department, Hottie Popo, do not do that. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> yeah, Jamie says, but of course that was an art journal. They are visual books and writing is visual. That's right. Uh, Barbara Clark says she likes Joanne Sharp's Letter Love 101 class. A lot of good practice in that. I've heard that's really good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those crazy cats. Hi, Barbara. We have two Barbaras here, I think. Okay. So this is empty. I'm going to put it in the trash. And I promise you that before the day is over, somebody will haul it right back out of the trash and be having his way with that cup. Because that's how he is. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show you. I am not much of a... Um, <laughs> Joan likes animals with attitude. Well, he's got one. Charlie is the one who's had such an attitude lately. I mean, he just will talk to me. Like, and any of you that are familiar with Siamese, you know what lovely voices they have. It's kind of like this. Meow. Or, meow. Very demanding. Yes. And so Charlie has been doing that, like, nonstop for two days. And I'm like, I just have to put him in that room and I have to shut the door because otherwise I'm going to, like, strangle him or something. He's just been very annoying lately. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, I'm not one who uh, buys a lot of scrapbook paper, but uh, I saw this and I had to, I had to buy this. Now, many of you may have already seen it. I wasn't familiar with it, um, but this really appealed to me. This is a graphic 45 pad, and this is this is unusual to me for their style. Uh, they do nice scrapbook papers. I just don't use a lot of scrapbook paper, but look at these um, images. I uh, know. Life is a kaleidoscope. So, is that the name of this? Kaleidoscope Collection. Okay. But the back side of the pages, peacock feathers, and these are papers as opposed, well, let's see. Now, I guess it's probably cardstock. I don't know. It's like kind of in between. I would call it more of a cardstock, lightweight cardstock. But there's several pages of um, each one. But look at those. I know. Hi, Jersey Crafter. Hi, Nikki. I know. Look at these. Aren't they pretty? And there's the back of that one. Like I said, I'm not, uh, I don't generally go, and this is the 8x8 pad, I don't generally go for scrapbook papers, but this was so colorful and pretty, and I liked the, um, the words, the positive kinds of messages and stuff that I, I did have to break out and get that. And then this is what's on the back of those these cut apart, I think these are called cut apart things. They're like, I think they're about, some of them are about the size of ATCs. Let's see. This, it, this is, it's longer. These are longer than an ATC, but they're the ATC width. And, the, and then there's a couple of small ones. But anyway, that's what's on the back. And so let's see what else. And then this one, these remind me of those things we used to do when we were kids where you color all the, the um, intense color crayon and then go back over it with black and then scratch art, scratch art. Yeah. That's what's on the back of that one. 
So there's three pieces of paper, and then this is so blah compared to all the rest of those. They still have their place, don't they? And that's what's on the back. That's enough to make your eyes go crazy. But look at those. Aren't they pretty? I just think they're gorgeous. And that's what's on the back. So the reason I put these out, is, got this out, and then this you can turn into like borders. And you could even put tape on the back of that and make sort of a washi type, type thing. More peacock feathers. And then this is the last one. But aren't those pretty? I think it also comes in a 12 by 12. I am an enabler. I am an enabler. This was too good not to share, though. Look at all those. Look at those peacocks. I mean. I mean. Can you, uh, can you really resist that? Really? Hmm? And this, I bought this at a, and it also has some templates. There's a page of templates here on the back cover and also on the front cover. So if you didn't have dies and you wanted to cut these out and use them for templates, you could do that. I had to show it to you. So anyway, this is, like I said, this is the 8x8 eight eight pad. I think it also comes in 12x12, 12 12, but I prefer the smaller size. So I know, it's very pretty. It's really pretty. Okay, so let's take a look at this art journal that I, um, I started this art journal like forever ago. And so I thought we would add some stuff to it. I don't know how far we'll get. We probably won't finish any pages. We'll probably just stick stuff in it. I don't know. This is... <laughs> Never mind all the garbage that's on my table. This was an art journal that I made, and it's big. It measures nine inches. This is much bigger than anything that I normally do. Nine inches by 12 inches. And it is two and a quarter inches thick in the spine. The outside of it is... Um, upholstery fabric please show the front of the book of which book um, which book dar you'll have to give me more information because I don't know what was this what you wanted to see the front of I'm just waiting to see what the chat says. Hopefully that is what you're after. I don't know what else it would have been. So this is the... <clears throat> <clears throat> Hi, Deborah. Um, graphic 45, and it's called the Kaleidoscope Collection. <laughs> What's in your Amazon cart? Mm-hmm. So this is, um, as I said, this was upholstery fabric, and it was stuff that was on sale someplace. I don't, because I bought it for I bought it for a class I was teaching at one point, and so I'll open this up so you can see how it how it is, how the cover is made, and I made this a number of years ago. And these are die cuts. These are die cuts from the Tim Holtz Biggs dies. These are in denim. And then they were embossed. And this one I rubbed acrylic paint over the top of it. So that's what you can see. And these are some of the movers and shapers that are Tim Holtz dies as well. The cording I made. This is a machine made cording. There's a video on this in the tips and tricks area at the website that shows you step by step how to do that. This is a different upholstery fabric on this side and I put something in the middle of this but I don't remember what it was if it was plastic or what it was but there's something in there um, I don't remember what it was and then I used a piece of plastic 
I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. I put a piece of, well, you can't see it right there. It's a piece of clear plastic that I did the stitching through to give the fabric and the signatures more support. So this has a truckload of signatures in it. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It has 11 signatures in it. And uh, we'll go through this so you can see what I've done so far. I don't even remember how I made the pages. I do know that this is uh, paste paper and it's probably the Canson mixed media paper is probably what I did these pages in, but it's been too long ago. Joycey's here and so she might know. <laughs> Hi, Azure. Hi, Sophia. But these are paste paper treatment, and this is just, so that's paste paper. This has just got a bunch of stuff that um, I just kind of glued in it. This is stuff that came off my table, table. So this is newsprint that was on my table at one point. So I stuck it in here. And this is um, this is rice rice paper, I think, that came from somewhere. I don't know where. And then I went back here. Those are a bunch of blank pages, and I skipped to the middle of it, and I added some more stuff. And so I was just randomly gluing stuff in. So there's more of that. I think it's might be mulberry paper instead of rice paper. I don't know. And that's it. Okay. So that's all that's in here. And then this is this is going to go here. And I don't know, remember where I got this. It must have come out of, of a magazine because it's got a perforated something there. So um, I think maybe we'll stick this in first. What do you think? Yep, let's do that. So we're just going to play with this. Because it's just an art journal. It's just an art journal. And um, so if you have questions, pop them in the chat in all caps. I'm going to cut this image down a little bit. Because it was all this time it's been sitting inside this book waiting to be glued or attached in some way. So let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's put it in, shall we? So I don't even know if this is even... So are you guys art journaling or doing any art as are you just being entertained? And that's just as crooked as can be. That is really crooked. So let's see if we can straighten that up, shall we? It'll be interesting to see whether I can straighten that up. Put it in backwards. Joycey. Joycey. Joycey's always trying to get me in trouble. I call her Noodle. All right, let's see. Is that straighter? It's straighter. Okay. Straighter. Straighter than it was. And I'm going to put it right here in the front. I had this stuck on the back of this ponder book. I don't know what this means, so I'm going to throw it away. I don't need it. All right, so we're going to put this in just like this. So you know what we're going to stick this in with is I'm going to use this three-in-one glue. Mm -hmm. Fussy cutting flowers for decoupage. That Joan, she is always busy. She is always busy. Um, first of all, before we do that, let's put some ink around this. What do you say? Let's 
So I'm going to just put some ink around the edge of that. I don't know. Ponder book. I don't know what it is, Sophia. What do you think I was, what do you think I saved that for and wrote that down? I have no idea. I have no idea what I saved that for. So this is just roughing up the edge a little bit with some color. You might not be able to see it, but but I can. Mm -hmm. So art journaling for me is different things, and that would be clear based on the number of books that I have. I have some that are reserved for teaching uh, classes and stuff. And then I have some that are random, which this would qualify as random. Okay, so we're going to put this in. <laughs> Noodle. She says, I wrote that down. Barb threw away at 12, 16 p.m. my time, the ponder book, just in case. Okay, so that way, if if need be, I can ask Joycey what I did with that and when I got rid of it, right? So I'm just going to stick this in. This is three-in-one glue. If this eventually yellows in my book, it's just an art journal page doesn't matter. All right, let's see if we can get this in here kind of straight-ish. Not necessarily centered, but straight-ish. Straight-ish. She is. Hi, Julie. I know your not, last name is not Topaz Pearl Girl. <laughs> All right, so I'm just sticking this in here. I don't, no, I don't need a ruler. No, I don't need a ruler. I have rulers. I just don't use them, Janet. See? There's a ruler. There's a ruler. <laughs> They're even where I can get a hold of them. And I still don't use them. Look, Janet. There's a ruler. There's a ruler. Yep, I have plenty of rulers. I even have, Janet, I even have, um, look. I have rulers like this. I have, that's a ruler. Here's a ruler. Here's a ruler. Janet, I have plenty of rulers in my life. I'm just not using them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> All right, so um, let's take this and add some stuff to it. What do you say? Shall we do that? I think that's a good idea. How about if we put some paint on this? Now, I have to be okay with the fact that this is probably going to get paint on it. This is probably going to get paint on it. Um, and I'll probably get paint slopped over on this. And that's okay. I have to be okay with that. If I'm not okay with that, then I should not be art journaling, should I? And I'll stick a piece of, um, piece of wax paper in here. Janet's the one that needs ruler intervention, not me. Mm -hmm. Janet's the ruler, the ruler person, not me. I have rulers, I just don't use them. Okay, so I just stuck some wax paper in there. <laughs> Janet's giving me a hard time. Let's put another piece of um, wax paper, parchment, or something over on this side. Just so that we can see if we can keep pages from sticking together. I don't care if the paint slops around, but I don't want it really sticking together if I can avoid it. All right. So. All right, hang on. My chat went away for some reason. Okay, come on. Wake up, computer.
Okay, hold on everybody. I gotta I can't see the chat here for a second. I gotta restart my I gotta restart one of my computers. My computer glitched for some reason. All right. That doesn't happen very often. It happened today. The computer that has my chat on it decided to go all wonky. So I'll be back with you in just a second. It did. It just went a wonka doodle. Wonka doodle. <clears throat> Don't you love it when all of a sudden, okay, I'm back with you. Um, don't you love it when all of a sudden things just go go a little crazy and you go, I don't know why it did that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's put some paint on this. And I got out my, uh, I have a container that has some distress stains on it and some distress paints. I'm going to use some distress paints. And uh, so we're going to just get some paint out and we're going to just paint. We're just going to paint. That's what we're going to do. We're going to paint. We're going to put some wild honey and some uh, picked raspberry. The reason I'm doing this is because I need to use these paints up. And maybe I'll put a little seedless preserves on here. I'm in that kind of mood. So I have these three colors. That seems like that might kind of go with this. So let's put some of that on there, shall we? Um, I've had these paints for a long time. I need to use them instead of treasuring them. I don't know why in the world we treasure stuff, but we do. So, these have a mixing ball in them. These are some of the ones that came out in the very beginning. And so they have the dauber top on them, which most of my dauber tops are no longer dauber-ish. So, I'm just going to put some of this, dump some of it out on the palette. If I need more, I can always dump out more. But these do have a mixing ball in them. Use your supplies. That is correct. That is what we're going to do. So I'm just going to put some a little bit of these colors out. I mean, they're getting a little crusty around the edges, these paints. And if I get out too much to use on this page, uh, we'll slap some on another page. This is how crusty they are. See all these little flecks? Yep, that is from what dried around the rim of these bottles. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to get rid of these crumbs off my palette. So maybe, although it would just add texture, wouldn't it? Just add texture. Okay, let's put, I'm going to put some water in my container. So I have my old cruddy water bottle. This is a CD, the top of a CD thing. You know, blank CDs or DVDs. So I'm just going to put some water in there. Don't tell the technical department that I have water out. I have just a cruddy brush, but it's soft enough to use. And I'm going to use a rag in case I want to do something with that. So I just wet the brush. And let's put some paint on here, shall we? Let's just put on some paint see what happens because we can this is a variety of uh, stuff on here some of this is fabric like this is fabric this is paper where some of these papers come 
have come from. I have no idea. This is fabric. Jelly plate printed fabric. And clearly this has crud on that paper. I don't know where that came from. I can't imagine. Can't imagine where that could have come from. When you don't know what else to do or you don't have anything else going on and you're bored, start an art journal of some kind. If you don't like what you do in your art journal, get you some black gesso and gesso over the top of it or white gesso, either one. And this paper that these pages are made out of are, uh, it's a little thin-ish, so. All right, let's add a different color. So I'm going to go to the Seedless Preserves color. And we'll add a little bit of that here and there. Some people plan out their art journal pages. They know exactly where they're going and what they're going to do with their pages when they start. I don't. I just kind of go for it. That's not to say that there have not been times when I've planned things out, because I have, you know. I have. Adding a little bit of water to the paint to make it go a little bit further. And I'm just bouncing color around the page. Since it already had some collage elements on it, which were just random bits and pieces from my scrap bin, which is sitting here on the floor. Waiting to add more to whatever. Joan is um, is Patty broadcasting again later? I didn't keep up with her broadcast schedule about your stencils. If you tell me, I will repeat it for the recording purposes. Okay, so we got some of that on there. So let's use some of this other one. Patty says when she does random, she ends up with a mess. Oh, you just keep going until you get it. Just keep going until something happens. Sooner or later, it'll come together. Sooner or later, we'll make it come together somehow. Patty is streaming at 5 Eastern tonight. Then is she streaming other times this weekend? Okay, 5 Eastern tonight, which is May the 3rd, and tomorrow is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you all. Hi, Mommy Kate. I'm glad you're here and you get to be here live, too. I thank goodness for recordings, right? So 
So I'm just adding color to fill in color. And I'm just lifting this up just because it makes it easier for me to do that. And 2 Eastern tomorrow, which is Saturday, and 11 Eastern on Sunday. Okay. Thanks. So 5 Eastern tonight, 2 Eastern tomorrow, and 11 Eastern on... Oh, Chewbacca passed away. Aw. I didn't know that. I did not know that. Did not know that. Okay, so I'm just putting color on these pages just because I want to put color around and uh, just kind of help unite some of the page elements. I don't know why, just because. Hulk Mandalus, what's that, Vicky? H A L K? Yesterday, and he was in his 70s. I didn't not, I just did not know that. See, I just don't, I just don't keep up. I don't keep up. I'm uninformed. Um, Patty's channel is Patty Tolly Parish, right? I got my hands in the paint, so it's problematic at the moment. Isn't it Patty Tolly Parish? If you'll just tell me what it is, I can, I can repeat it for everybody. So, I don't know how many of you follow me on Instagram, but we have, um, yes, Patty Tolly Parish on YouTube. It's P-A-T-T-I-T-O-L-L-E-Y-P-A-R-R-I-S-H, Patty Tolly Parish. Okay, so there you go. So, you can find her here on YouTube, and she will be the one doing the streaming because Joan doesn't stream, as I heard Patty say, yet. Yes. That cracked me up when I heard her say that. Like, hmm. Yet, huh? Hi, Mary Ellen. And anybody that I missed, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for um, hanging out with us. We're just doing some art journaling because that was what I had a request for. And so that's what we're doing. Okay, so we've got some uh, color going on that kind of brings things together a little bit. We may stick a little more color on this here and there. Maybe we'll do some of this one in here. So I'm not cleaning my brush, I'm just picking up other colors and just sticking them on here. Okay, so that's that. <clears throat> Alrighty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a stencil. My nose is running today. That's more information than anybody needed to know, I realize. <clears throat> However, if I keep stopping <clears throat> and there's periods of silence, you'll know why. <laughs> you'll know why. So I pulled out just a few stencils, so I'm going to use this one. I like this one because it's got um, different patterns on one stencil. This is a Crafters Workshop stencil. It is a Julie Fayfan Balzer, and it's uh, called Patterns. Patterns. It's TCW539. 
That was one of the things I really liked about Joan's stencils that Patty showed is that um, a number of her stencils I saw had different designs on one stencil. And I really like that a lot. I think that's really cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the same colors that I've been using here. Uh, so for example, I'm going to pick up the picked raspberry, which is the light pink, and I'm just going to stick in a little bit of patterning here and there. Because why not? We can. We can. We can do what we can, right? So I'm just going to work with the same pattern here for a minute. If you're on a uh, limited budget, which many of us have limitations, of course, um, a great way to do your stencils, if you like stencils, is to buy those that have multiple patterns on one stencil. Hi, Norma. Oh, thank you, Alona. Okay, so we're just going to kind of, I'm going to get the water. Illegal fluids, we're going to move that off the table for a moment. And I'm going to pull this over. Okay. Try to get a little more space here so you can see the whole thing. All right, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that same color. This is the picked raspberry, and I'm just using the same um, the same design and add a little bit more of the design. So it's kind of coming across the page a little bit. So let's pick up a little bit more. I still have some of that paint left, so oh, not to be outdone. We can't have paint left. So anyway, those of you, I started to tell this story a minute ago. Those of you who watch, who follow me on Instagram knew uh, about our baby birds. We had baby birds that nested on our front porch. The, the mama built, she's Mama Robin. And she built a nest on our on top of our porch light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on top of the porch light. And um, so we got to watch the baby birds. And they fledged like day before yesterday. I happened to be watching. I'd stepped out to look at them. And um, those baby birds, those little baby birds, two of them. Two of them flew off the nest right in front of my eyes. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And before the day was over, the baby number three left the nest. And, yeah, it was exciting and it was sad all at the same time. All right, so I'm going to, like, come over here to a different spot. And I'm just going to clean off the stencil using baby wipe all right it was so much fun to watch them there's a mama robin she was a very good mama okay so let's use another design on here um, how about Let's do um, let's do some lines. Shall we do some lines? Why not? Let's do some lines. And I'm going to use another sponge. So I'm just using makeup sponges, which have paint dried in them and everything else. And I'm going to pick up the um, that mustardy color. What color was that? Wild wild honey. So that's what I'm using. Okay, I could not believe that that mama, or that those babies took off right in front of my face. 
So as I said, it was bittersweet. You want them to, you know, it's like raising your kids. You want them to grow up and have productive lives, and yet it's still so sad when they leave. Okay, so I'm just building layers here, just, you know, just building some layers. I don't care what it really looks like. I'm just putting layers of stuff on here. I'm using the same colors of paint. Just using the same colors of paint. Okay. And it would be handy if I put something under this book. Maybe we should do that, huh? Oh, look at that. And now, voila, I have a flat surface to work on. Mm -hmm. Instead of working in the air. That was a really good idea you guys had to tell me to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Okay, so we got some of that here and there. And in the, in the process, bonuses, I've used up two little piles of paint. Okay, let's go back over. And, um clean the stencil off over here. Just randomly clean it off in another page. Now you'll start to hear the whining cat because he his time limit, he knows when two hours are up and he's about had all he can handle in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's do one more pattern. On this um, page. So, how about if we do these little plus signs? And I'm going to use the last color, which is the dark one, which was Seedless Preserves. So let's stick a little bit of that here and there. You hear a dog barking, it's not mine. Mine is being quiet. Shocker. Okay, so a little bit of this and a little bit of that here and there, there and here. Don't think about it, just put it down. Just do it. Okay? Just do it. seeing if I can get some of this to come across the page just so it kind of carries over a little bit. Can you hear Charlie? He's got a, what he does is he puts his nose, I'm telling you, they what they do is they put their nose right against the door and they go Mow. So it gets a nice big echo. Mm -hmm. Another funny thing about these cats is on the other side of this door, this goes in my sewing room. On the other side of that door is a great big long mirror. It goes from, you know, it's a full length mirror, which I put posters on. <laughs> Guess I don't use it as a mirror. Well, the bottom part of it is um, still exposed as a mirror. And so Chance, I've watched him do this. He'll go over and he'll admire himself in the mirror. He looks at himself like this. And then he stands up and he walks behind the, the door. 
and he puts his front feet up on the, the mirror and he walks with his hind legs and he does this with his front feet and he'll slam the door shut. And then he'll sit there and look at himself because he's very pretty, you know. He's very pretty. Yep, he's very pretty. Okay, I've just about run out of paint of this color. Need a teensy bit more. It is funny. He is, God, he's a funny cat. He is a funny, funny cat. I'm just putting a little more paint out on my palette. Not much, just a little bit. Just a little bit. He is a funny, funny cat. Don't know what I would ever do without these goofy cats. I'd be looking for another goofy cat, I'll tell you that. I'd be looking for another goofy one. As much as Charlie can irritate the stuffing out of me with his following me around and talking to me. I don't know what I'd do without him, you know? Okay, a little bit more down here. All right, so we might I'm just randomly putting some of these shapes. I don't care that they're very strong. I'd like them to be strong enough I can see them. <laughs> there is that. Well, you can't see that very well, but oh well. Okay, maybe a little bit more here. My sponge is really dry. Really, really, really dry. Out of paint. Charlie needs a pass because he has no teeth. <laughs> Chance doesn't have any teeth either, so there you go. All right. So, um, we got that much going. Oh, we need to clean off the stencil again. So, we'll just find this a spot and clean off the stencil. So, adding a little bit more stuff over here on this on this page. Just get some of the paint off and um, get some of the paint off the stencil. It adds a little pattern over there. All right, so there we go. Now, I'm going to let you guys help me figure out what, what would you like to see on this page next? Hmm? What would you like? Because if you don't tell me, I will stick something on here. <laughs> if you don't tell me, I will just be sticking stuff on here. Let's see what you have to say. I like how it's looking. I have to say that. I like how it's looking. I may just stick a big, you know, word on it. Some gold. Add a face. Stenciled face. I don't have any stencil faces. I don't. Draw yourself. <laughs> Joycey. Uh, napkin collage. I don't think I've got any napkins that will actually work with this. Something that was black and white would be would be nice. A watermelon. Butterflies. You guys aren't helping me. <laughs> you guys are not helping me. <clears throat> you are not helping me. Let's see what... I have a couple images here. Let's see if... Look how cute that is. Is that cute or what? Look at these. Aren't those cute images? Mm -hmm. Cute images. I don't know that I want to use them, but I think they're cute. Um, just looking to see what I have here. I have some circles. 
Do you think we should add some circles? I'm feeling. I think we might need to add some circles. Look. I'm think I'm feeling some circles. I'm feeling some circles. I'm not going to be on here too much longer, but I'm feeling some circles. So I'm thinking we might have to add some circles. Since they're on my desk, huh? Trying to pick them up. Let's hit this with a wee bit of heat, and then we'll collage some circles. There's not a lot of paint on here, so it's not too wet. I like this color combination, I have to say. All right, let's um, let's do some. Let's add some collage bits. So I've wet my brush. And what I have in here, I don't know if it's going to come out or not. Oh, the bottle's singing to me. I'm just going to add, I'm just going to randomly pick up some circles. And um, we're going to just start putting down some circles. This is collage page. So these are some die cut circles. Black and white cat. I don't have any black and white cats. <laughs> I have had a black and white cat, Tuxedo Kitty. Her name was Moonbeam. Moonbeam. She was a uh, she was a giveaway kitty. She was a great cat. She was a fat little thing. I used to, in my younger days, I would um, put my cutting board on the floor and I would cut out patterns. I did a lot of garment sewing and I would cut out garments on the floor. I don't do that anymore. I outgrew that activity crawling around on the floor cutting out fabric yeah I outgrew that but anyway she loved to chase my scissors uh, when I was cutting out fabric she loved to do that so anytime I would be cutting out something if, if she'd be sound she could be sound asleep somewhere else in the house and then here she'd come yeah she'd come and get on the whatever I was doing. They're just, there's the tuxedo cats are so much fun. I mean, it's not like other cats aren't fun too, but they're just so fun. They're so pretty. My granddaughter has a tuxedo kitty. His name is Ari, A-R-I. I don't know if that's short for something, but that's what they call him, it's Ari. Oh, I have news. My granddaughter is engaged. Yeah, she is. It's exciting. That is exciting. Who doesn't like spots and circles? If you don't like spots and circles, this isn't a good place for you to hang out. I will tell you that. I know. Isn't that fun? So, yeah, she is engaged. Don't have a date for anything, but...
they were in Colorado, he took her back to the place where they started dating to propose. And they, um, she sent me, uh, or sent, actually sent both of us a message and wanted to know if we wanted to FaceTime with them one morning a few weeks ago. And I thought, this is unusual. I knew they were away on a trip. And I thought, this is a little unusual. And then I started thinking about it, and I thought, oh, I wonder if I know what this is about. <laughs> and Graham was right. Graham was right. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that sweet? Yeah, I like him a lot. I like her a lot, too. She is my sweet granddaughter. Sweet girl. Sweet, sweet girl. Boy, do I miss her. I miss hanging out with her, let me tell you. She used to come over every Sunday night and do her laundry here. Oh, goodness. And I'd fix dinner when she was in college. Boy, I miss those days. I'm telling you, you just, when you have the opportunity to be with um, kids, you just stop and you just do. You just stop and you do. Because those days get over with way too soon. Stop and pay attention. Nothing is so important that you uh, need to do something else. Nothing. So fortunately, I did stop and pay attention and make those memory recordings. You know what I mean? Make those memory recordings. I love these circles. I love these circles. Look how pretty and bright they are. I just love circles. Spirals, circles, ovals, you name it. I like them. And I like building up the layers on the pages. Mm -hmm. I might get some great grands. It's true. It's true. Be a great grandmother before I turn 70. That'd be great. And grand. God. Oh, 70. Better than the alternative, isn't it, folks? <laughs> it's better than the alternative for certain. Bye, Joan. Good to have you. Good luck with the stencil, the stencil, this um, particular stencil release. I know she's had other stencil releases in the past. I think this is her second one, maybe. Look at all those little spots bouncing around there. I love that. I love those spots. Okay, let's put a couple more spots on here, shall we? Why not? Let's put a few more little spots on. I'm not going to be on here too much longer. We probably will not finish this page, but we're just playing with the concept of building layers. And what I want you to see on in doing this is that you don't have to finish anything. You absolutely don't. Well, clearly you don't because this book is been sitting in its current state for probably two or three years so you don't have to finish anything but it's fun every once in a while to just get out your stuff just get out your stuff and 
throw some scraps in, throw some paint on. Just see what happens. If it doesn't turn out to be anything that you particularly love, um, yeah, so what, right? Oh, you were an hour early? Okay, Joan. <laughs> Yeah, just get out your stuff and just um, put some put some stuff on some stuff. It doesn't ever have to be anything. I don't know if any of you follow Lizzie Brewer, Elizabeth Brewer, but she is doing a whole series of um, doodle journals. And... I'm telling you, Lizzie has totally inspired me with her doodle journals. If you don't follow Elizabeth Brewer, I highly recommend that you do. She is known as Scrappin' Lizzie. She has some of the most wonderful doodle journals. I'm telling you, she really does. She is doing really well with her, her doodle journal. She really is. She does some great. Um, she really does some fun things with her doodles. Some, she's done some stuff that I had not really thought about doing. The way she she's taken magazine images and just cut out random shapes and circles and glued them in her doodle journal. And then she just starts going for it and just starts making patterns around it. And besides that, she says some of the funniest things ever, ever. I'm telling you, the other night, she um, she said this publicly, so I don't think I'm saying anything out of, out of school, but she was talking about her exhaust system. <laughs> and I started laughing. I started laughing. She was not, and she wasn't talking about a car, okay? I started laughing, and I tell you, I that was a good, good belly laugh for me. That was a good, good belly laugh. I appreciated. I appreciated that. She is funny, and she is quick. Yeah. Uh, I know. Jamie, were you there listening to the exhaust story? I'm telling you, I just... <laughs> oh, she's funny. She is funny. Very real, very honest, very open. I'm just looking in the computer. Whoops. Spot just jumped right out of my hand. That little spot jumped out of my hand. Anyway, she does. She's just about up to 6,000 subscribers. So if anybody hasn't subscribed to her channel, that would be... A good thing a good channel for you to subscribe to and she puts up lots of videos and she does um, hi Krissa oh thank you it's just a little just some little art journal art journal love today and okay I think we're gonna call that good you never know if it's done I could add more to it later you never know 
She is a sweet person. She really is. All right, so we're going to put, uh, I'm going to put all my little spots back in its little, their little house known as a plastic bag. Because I have lots of little spots. This is where they live until they find a home. They live in, in their little home here. So, and they keep jumping out. I'm telling you, these little things. Okay. And because, just because I can't stand stuff hanging off the edge of the pages, it's just, you know, we all have our things that drive us crazy. Stuff hanging off the edges of the pages are one of the things that drive me nuts. So I'm just going to give this a little drying time. And I'm going to trim up the edges of the pages and I'm going to ink around the edge just so that we have something to look at. And then I'll figure out what's going to happen next. And if I can get it, if I find that I get this page actually finished, or what feels finished to me, um, I will put the picture up and I'll do a blog post because I'm way behind doing blog posts. And I'm going to get in trouble with the technical department if I don't get back on that. Some of these look like they might need a little more love and care on the gluing front. But this is a big journal compared to what I normally do. So I'm just cutting off the bits the hangovers well she's funny Nancy I think you'll enjoy watching her she says that she's on the 69th level of the game of life but don't worry about it. she'll only be there for a year Okay, let's get rid of the papers. We don't need that anymore because we're not sticking anything together. So we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of my face journal because I don't need that anymore. I had some other stuff hanging over the edge of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that got away with that. Not in my journal. Mm -mm. <laughs> Some people like stuff hanging over the edges. I just happen to be one of those that doesn't like that. Okay, so um, now we've got clean edges. And now let's put a little bit of ink around the edge. And I'm going to use purple because that's what's out. Normally I use black. <clears throat> and I'm going to use purple because it's what happens to be out. So... But this just kind of frames the page a little bit and gives you kind of... Sometimes I do this in the middle of finishing a page, just like this. And the reason I do it is because it gives me... Sometimes it informs me, which is a fancy way of saying it gives me an idea of what to do next. Sorry about the lawnmowers. We have now encountered that time of year when the lawnmowers will be going... And we'll be just having to deal with it because the neighbors are close. And the lawnmowers are mowing. I like some of the things that have happened on this page. And it's all been just very random. I didn't think about it like the hand that's showing up. That's just because it was a scrap. And it has the hand on it. Boy, this is a big journal. Woo. I should use up a lot of scraps in this. That's the idea. 
but my my uh, the thing that I've found is that the more scraps you use up, they multiply, and the more you end up having. <laughs> the more you have, they grow. I'm telling you, they grow. So I'm gonna stick the cord underneath there, and uh, get rid of my paint because we're gonna get the sponsors out here in a minute. So I need to get rid of the paint. And I honestly hardly made a dent in my stuff. Hardly made a dent. However, we got a pretty page out of it. Yep, yeah, hardly made a dent. But anyway, Whitney Inquire Within. Mm hmm. Inquire Within. And so there we go. And then we'll figure out, I'll figure out what else I want to do to this page. Um, exactly, Vicki. Rabbit breeding papers. <laughs> so I'll do something else with it. I don't know. Put on, I'll put some sort of, I'll probably put words on it is probably what I'll do. I'll probably find, like, not this, but um, I'll find something that, you know, this, just to give you an idea. I'll put something on here, some sort of, words or something. I'll be using something that's probably more graffiti-esque than that. All right, so I'm going to set this off to the side. and need I need to let this totally, totally dry, so it's just going to live over here open for a while, because if you don't, acrylic paint has an uncanny ability for um, sticking itself together. Anyway, we talked about art journaling today. Now look at this. Okay, I want to show you this. Look at this. See this? I was going to use some of that today. Guess what? I didn't even touch that other than carry it in here. All right, let me move this and let the sponsors out. I'm telling you, he sits at the door and waits. He knows what time it is, and he sits there, and he waits to get out of there. Mm -hmm. says, and I want up here. Says, I want up here, and I mean it, and I want up here right now. All right, I'm just getting the cat cam set up. Getting cat cam set up. All right, you coming up? Oh, yeah, he was more interested in my coffee cup that's on the floor. I told you, this one, this is the coffee cup. This is the coffee drinker. You want that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you too embarrassed? I told him. I told him what you do. I told him what you do. And you're embarrassed about it, right? You're too embarrassed? Oh, too embarrassed. Can't do that. Oh goodness. <laughs> anyway, here is let's see if I can sorry, terrible camera work here for a minute. Get it down where you can see him a little bit better. Okay, so there's chance. Are you coming up? All right. All right. And why are they the sponsors? Well, they are the sponsors because most of the time they let me stream. Yeah, most of the time they let me stream. Trying to get the right shot here. Here we go. Yeah. So, this is the big mouth who's driving me crazy lately. And this is the the one who drinks coffee. So, anyway, he's embarrassed. Apparently, he wouldn't drink out of that cup today. Mm -mm. So, yeah, they're called the sponsors because they let me stream usually. And um, so with that being said, thank you so much for joining me. VIP members, remember your class is tomorrow. Your email has already shown up in your inbox. And that's it. Thanks, Joycey. Thanks, everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Barbara Clark says, he's saying, I thought you forgot me. I can never forget them because they're too loud and obnoxious. Yeah. So before the autofocus drives us all crazy. We're going to go. So thanks everybody for being here. Um, 
the I did do several impromptu streams where I did the one uh, that one mandala and the last one took a while for me to get it edited and put it up online because I had to cut some parts out of it where I got my mouth open and couldn't get it shut and uh, so that's online and in that one the fourth part I tell stories about how I got started streaming and classes and all that kind of stuff so if you're in, if you're bored and you don't want to watch mandalas but you're doing something you just want to listen that is something you can do just thought I'd tell you that all right I will see you guys um, in a month or before who knows could be before and um, come over and visit us at how to get creative we had loads and loads and loads of video classes over there new video class will be going up this next week and I think that's it so remember to get creative today because you know it's easy and I will see you again really soon stay creative everybody bye bye